Herman Webster Mudgett, better known as H.H. H. Holmes, was a con artist and a bigamist who was one of America's first serial killers. Sometimes referred to as the Beast of Chicago, Holmes is believed to have killed somewhere between 200 and 260 people. He killed many of his victims in a specially constructed home, which was later nicknamed the Murder Castle. He was apprehended in 1894, and he was hanged for his crimes two years later. Holmes was born Herbin Webster Mudgett, May 16, 1861, in New Hampshire. He was born into an affluent family. Holmes enjoyed a privileged childhood and was said to be unusually uh, gifted and talented at a young age. Still, there were haunting signs of what was to come. He expressed an interest in medicine, which reportedly led him to practice surgery on animals, some accounts indicating that he may have actually been responsible for the death of a friend. Holmes' life of crime began with various frauds and scams. As a medical student at the University of Michigan, he stole corpses and used them to make false insurance claims. Holmes may have used these bodies for experiments as well. In 1885, Holmes moved to Chicago, Illinois. He soon found work in a pharmacy using his now infamous alias Dr. Henry H. Holmes. He eventually took over the business and was later rumored to have killed the original owner. Holmes had a three-story building constructed nearby, creating elaborate house horrors. The upper floor contained his living quarters and many small rooms where he tortured and killed his victims. There were also trap doors and chutes that enabled him to move the bodies down to the basement where he could burn the remains in a kiln uh, or dispose of them in other ways. Now, during the 1893 Columbian Exposition, Holmes opened up his house for visitors. And unfortunately, many of these guests that checked in never checked out. No one knows for certain the total number killed, but many were women who were seduced, swindled, and then murdered for parts. Holmes had a habit of getting engaged to a woman only for his fiancee to suddenly disappear. Holmes left Chicago shortly after the World Fair to continue his schemes, including a plan with an associate named Benjamin Pitzel in which Pitzel would fake his death to collect $10,000 from life insurance companies. Jailed at one point for another fraud, Holmes confided in fellow inmates and a notorious outlaw, Marion Hedgepeth, who knew Holmes as H.M. Howard about the life insurance scheme. Hedgepeth later helped investigators by revealing the details of their discussion. While the authorities eventually identified Holmes as Holmes, they didn't catch on soon enough to stop his final murders. Holmes killed Petzl and after telling his widow that her husband was alive but in hiding, convinced her to let him travel with her five children who also became his victims. Weeks after several weeks of outrunning authorities, Holmes was finally apprehended on November 1894. Holmes appealed his case but lost. Estimates of the total number of people Holmes killed range from 20 to as many as 200, but it's believed to be around 260. Holmes died on May 7, 1896, when he was hanged for the Petzl murder. He was buried in Pennsylvania. Until the moment of his death, Holmes remained calm and amiable, showing very few signs of fear, anxiety, or depression. Despite this, he asked that his coffin be contained in cement and buried 10 feet deep because he was concerned grave robbers would steal his body and use it for dissection. Upon being hanged, Holmes' neck didn't snap. He instead strangled to death slowly, twitching for over 15 minutes before being pronounced dead, 20 minutes after the trapdoor had sprung shut. This is a fitting death. Now here's a connection with Jack the Ripper. The trail of Ripper murders ends at the start of 1891 and Holmes' murder spree is thought to have began at the end of 1891. Should they be the same person, the time works out conveniently for Holmes to have traveled between England and America during this gap. Ship records show that an H. Holmes made the journey many times, making it plausible this could be the same H. Holmes as the one who ran the murder castle. Holmes was renowned for being a document keeper. However, between 1888 and 1891, 
the time of the Ripper murders, Holmes had no documentation and there was no trace of where he was. Despite beliefs that the Ripper was a messy killer, he was actually methodical about his killing. Although not on the same meticulous level as Holmes Castle, this could have been the lead up for Holmes to develop his style of killing. Jack's final victim being found in bed suggests a progression to no longer committing random murders in the street. Both killers removed their victim's organs. Holmes was a qualified doctor and the Ripper was believed to have had some medical training. Sketches of what the Ripper supposedly looked like drawn from the testimonies of over 13 witnesses who saw the Ripper in action eerily matched the photos of Holmes. For Jeff Mudgett, Holmes' great-great-grandson, who believes the Ripper and Holmes were the same person, the similarity is close enough that were the case happening today, it would warrant an arrest. Finally, the infamous Dear Boss letter written by the Ripper, in which he refers to himself as Jack the Ripper, was sent to the Central News Agency in 1888 and is thought by linguists to have American idioms. The letter gloats about the murders already attributed to the same killer known previously as the Whitechapel murderer, among other names. Should Holmes and the Ripper be the same person, it would make sense as to why this letter appeared to be written by an American. Lastly, while Holmes sought to gain the life insurance money from his victims, thus fueling his greed, the Ripper murdered the poor. There was no financial gain for the Ripper, but could this have been Holmes practicing for his American murders? We may never know. Let me know in the comments section what you thought about this episode and if there's someone you're interested in me doing a video on. Until next time, goodbye.